Hello all, welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be a kind of rundown of the Threshold tool in Photoshop. This tool is used a lot in street work graphics and just in general text and image manipulation. So it's very useful and a good graphic designer knows the ins and outs of this tool. So I'm gonna show you all of that today in this video. Let's get started. So first off, where do we find Threshold? It is in the image and then adjustments, and we have threshold down here. But more aptly, if you go to the adjustment layers that you have available to you in Photoshop, by going down here to this little circle icon, you can make a threshold adjustment layer. And just for the record, I would recommend using the adjustment layer rather than doing image and adjustments because the adjustment layer is editable and it's not destructible. And just quickly, what is it used for? What does it do? Like I said, it's used a lot in streetwear graphics, um, but you'll see this tool, I mean, you'll see the, the results of this tool everywhere throughout the world of graphic design, but it's used very much in streetwear. It's used for image manipulation. Let's say if you're half toning something, it's a very useful tool. When you're creating one or two color graphics out of your image, that's where Threshold comes in. So just to show you really quickly, this is Tom York with the Threshold Adjustment Layer on him. This is the original image. So you can see how it's turning this image into just plain, black and white it's a it's just binary information it's kind of got this cool like stamps look and sometimes that's what you're going for it's just this very cut out black and white kind of stamped graphic sometimes you want a little more detail so you might add things like noise and i'm gonna get into that in a second so just for reference here's that same image now with noise applied you can see there's a lot more detail in here and i'm gonna show you how we got here and kind of the ins and outs of how this works in just a second. So let's take a look at our threshold adjustment. I'm gonna bring this properties panel over here just so you can see it better. All right, so we have in our threshold panel, the histogram and our threshold level. The histogram is a graph of all the values of the pixels below the threshold adjustment layer. It's basically a graph of their intensity values, which for now you could denote as the brightness of the image below the adjustment layer. So if we go into something like the levels adjustment, you can see there's a very similar histogram going on here. It's basically showing you the intensity values of all the pixels below this layer. So back to the threshold adjustment, the threshold level here, this little slider right here, basically works as a slicer for the image. So wherever you set your threshold level, all of the intensity values for this example below 92 are gonna be black, and all the ones above 92 are gonna be white. So the more we decrease this, the more the white takes over, obviously, and then the more we increase it, the more black values show up. That is because if you set the threshold to something higher, let's say 165, all the intensity values below 165 turn to black, and a significant portion of the image has intensity levels below or at 165, so now the majority of the image has turned black through the threshold adjustment. You'll notice that the threshold level goes from anywhere from 1 to 255. That is because we are working in an 8-bit document. So our bit depth is 256. That means we have 256 tonal levels, which basically means the brightness. So if we go into our color picker here, you can see the same thing for our RGB values. We have 0 to 255, and that denotes 256 tonal levels here, including the zero. Each pixel in your document contains any combination of these values, which can range from zero to 256, and the intensity of the of any pixel in your image is a function of these three values right here. These values perceptually decide how bright a color is to our eyes, and so the end value that we get from that function is called the intensity. That is what the threshold histogram is showing you. So let's go back to our threshold adjustment. So we can see that this threshold adjustment layer is turning our full color image into a two color image. So it's taking our 8-bit image, which has 256 tonal values total, and turning it into an image with only two values total, or a one-bit image. So to dive into that more, check out this display of what different bit depths look like. Most of the time, you're gonna be working in an 8-bit document, so you have these 256 brightness values to work with and you might even notice some pixel banding sometime so let's say you're working with gradients like I have here if I zoom in a lot you can see that these values kind of start to break apart and you can see the seams at which it changes from one value to the next so similarly if we were to be in a 5-bit document we would have less depth values to work with and we would see that pixel banding starts to happen 
at a much higher rate and much more visible to our eyes. And if we go down all the way to one bit, we can see we lose all these gray values and we're just left with black and white. And this one bit color depth where we have only black and only white is where threshold brings us. So that basically means we're losing over 99% of our images information. And sometimes that's the look that you're going for. So in those moments, you really need to know what I'm about to say next. So if you just want this kind of cool stamped look, then obviously keep keep at it. But the main attraction of Threshold for me is something called dithering. And dithering allows us to transmit a lot more information through our one-bit images, on a perceptual level at least. So this one-bit image could actually hold a ton more information to our eyes, but still only be in binary values such as black and white. And that is what I displayed earlier with the noise. So if I added noise to this, you would see you have a lot more detail in this in this graphic, but it's still only transmitting black and white values. It's still binary information. So that's basically the, the gist of dithering. And just for an example, think about a stipple drawing, right? So stipple drawings are made up of pretty binary information. There's either a dot or no dot. And that is pretty much what dithering is, but where the dots fall is where that whole thing kind of gets complex. So on what grid these dots are based on is where all the kind of dithering algorithms and all come in. But I won't get into that in this video. That may be a separate video. For now, we're just gonna keep it simple. And I'm gonna explain to you how you can use dithering in your threshold of graphics with noise and with halftones. For now, all you need to know is that dithering allows us to basically simulate tonal detail by interpolating our lost values into a black and white pattern. So this is kind of a blown up example that I have here. But this is basically this perceptually. And if I were to put this on a much smaller scale, they would, to our eyes, look the same. So if I zoom out a ton, you can see that they're kind of resembling each other here. To give another example, I have this 50% gray layer here, and this is just a solid 50% gray, but if I added noise to this gray layer, if I go into filter noise, add noise, it would obviously add noise all over this image, and if I zoom in, you can see that it's almost binary information. It's just dithered in a way that it looks like 50% gray when you zoom out enough. So if I zoom out just enough, you can see to our eyes that looks basically the same as our actual 50% gray layer. So this 50% gray layer is one tonal value. And if I were to threshold this, you would see that we only have one vertical marking here, which is directly in the middle of the brightness values. And if you go on either side, it turns either to black or white. And that has a good display pretty much of how threshold works. But you can see that we don't have any detail here. It's either gonna be black or it's gonna be white because there's only one value in this image. And that is of course the 50% gray. However, if we were to dither this and add something like noise, now we can see that there's a lot more perceived information being transmitted here, and it still looks like 50% gray. And when I go back to the histogram on the threshold, we see that we now have almost a perfectly normal, a perfect Gaussian distribution of values here. And so we have a much, much wider range of perceived values to choose from here. And so how does this translate to images? You guessed it, it's by adding noise. Noise is the savior of all things. It is holy, and normally you would add noise by going into filter noise, but let me just show you a little trick real quick. If you want better looking noise, you go to filter, camera raw filter, and there will be an option here under effects for grain. Just crank that all the way up. You can play with the settings a bit, but yeah, just, it's a much more appealing noise than a filter noise gives you. So I'm gonna press OK and we see now on our image we have a ton of noise and if we were to threshold this we get a ton more perceived detail and values to choose from than if we were to do this without noise. You can also see in the histogram here that the image with noise added has a kind of smoother distribution and less harsh than the image without the noise which you can see here. And while we're at it here's another little trick. Instead of adding noise destructively to the image by adding it directly on that layer, what you can do is make a new layer to shift, delete, or shift backspace on your keyboard and fill that layer with 50% gray and then add noise to this 50% gray layer. So I'm going to just add the same noise from Camera Rock Filter and I'm going to set that to overlay. And that's going to be layer below it 
and add noise to it, essentially. And just as a fun display of how noise diffuses the values in your image and gives you more perceived detail, I'm going to duplicate this layer a shit ton of times. And you can see that the more noise we add, the more detail that comes through, or the more per perceived detail comes through, through the use of dithering. And if we go back to the histogram here, we can see that the distribution is way smoother than if I were to turn off all the noise. We have a much harsher distribution here. And that means there are less tonal levels to choose from in order to get that detail out of your image. So instantly by adding noise, we have this insane visual difference and a smoother transition between the values, which gives us this very tasteful Xerox look. And this is essentially dithering to an extent. The more noise you add, obviously, the more perceived detail you get. But don't add too much noise because it's gonna look like shit. And you just kinda wanna find that sweet spot where it's just the right amount of noise and it emits just the amount of detail that you want it to. And the really, really fun part about this is that it works with many other patterns besides noise. So you could do this with halftones as well. So if I were to slap a halftone pattern on here, which I have from my depth tone pack. Let me go find that. All right, cool. So we have a halftone pattern here. I'm gonna set that to overlay. Maybe change the size a little bit. So yeah, now we have this same image did it, but now instead of using a noise pattern, we're using a halftone pattern. So now you can say this image is halftone. Add a little levels adjustment and boom, we have a perfectly good looking halftoned image treatment for our image here. If we zoom in, we see we have these great halftones going on. And of course this works with any other pattern. I have quite a few in the vault. So if I were just to run through a few of them, we have this kind of scan lines pattern, vertical lines, but there's a kind of diffusion pattern here. I have a ton just spread out throughout my patterns library that have just kind of grown throughout the years. But yeah, so we'll just stick with halftones for now, but there are a ton of patterns that you can find online. You can just import them into your patterns library and then overlay them on your image and you could essentially dither your image in accordance to that pattern. And boom, that's basically the gist of it. You can already assume the massive implications that this has for just doing image treatments for graphic work and making cool graphics for whatever it may be for clothes, for posters, and so on. And not only does it look super sick, it also works great for those who are merchandise designers or clothing brand owners who design for their brand because it limits the color palette of your image, obviously. So when you're sending this to print, you save money and it also looks kind of cool. Like I said, you could piece this all together to tie it into your own graphics. That's pretty much what this demonstration was about, giving you the knowledge and the power to do so. But I made a sample graphic that I want to show you, and I'm just going to run through the making of that graphic just to show you the kind of workflow that you could use and how easy this is. So I basically just started with this image of this mouth and these lips. It kind of looks cool, it has some cool lighting on it, so that's why I chose it. And I layer masked out kind of the edges to get a soft blend into the background. You can obviously do a better job on, on your graphics, but this is just for display. So just kind of going rough with it. But either way, when we threshold it, those kind of imperfections fade out. The next step I did was put my logo. So I dragged my logo into the composition and I used the free transform warp tool a bit to kind of warp it to the shape of the lips. And while I'm doing all this, I have the threshold and the halftone pattern operating. So I have this group here where I have the threshold and I have the halftone pattern set to soft light or you can set it to overlay. And I just have this levels adjustment here for some brightness changes. And I have another levels adjustment here just to add some more detail on that logo. And that's pretty much the finished graphic and it looks really cool. It was really simple. And just to add some color, I put this colorful layer on top here and set it to screen, which basically brightens all the black values or the, or the dark values to the color that I have. And here's what that same graphic would look like with noise instead of halftone. I added quite a few noise layers here and I set them to overlay and I added just enough to get the desired effect. But Obviously, you can play around with this and find an effect that suits your liking. And if you want, you can even combine the patterns. So if I turn this halftone on as well, we get kind of a noisy, distressed halftone look. Looks really cool. And we could just pop any image in here and we have that same image treatment. So let me go ahead and drag the Tom York into there. And we can see that we have the 
exact same image treatment on this image and it's automatically pretty cool. I can turn on or off whatever pattern layers I want to use and it's pretty malleable and adjustable. So if you want to change this pattern to say the skin line patterns, maybe you found another pattern on the web somewhere, you can go ahead and just change this pattern, press OK, and you have a completely new image treatment in just a few simple clicks and simple steps. And that is pretty much how you could use the threshold adjustment layer to liven up your graphics, get some cool image treatments, and use them in whatever designs you see fit. This is a very simple and easy and beautiful workflow with great results. So definitely want to keep this in your toolbox when designing whatever it may be for merchandise or posters, streetwear, whatever. This is great knowledge to have. And the more you learn about this tool and the more you learn about dithering and how that affects threshold and bit depth and all of that, the more you can start to implement these kind of advanced techniques into your graphics and make them better day by day. So that's pretty much it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Otherwise, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.